Hello and welcome to Fine Tune. My guest today in Fine Tune is Padma Shri Patricia Mukim, a veteran journalist and an activist. She has been keeping a close observations on the developments taking place in the entire region. Well, uh, it could be said, uh, as the saying goes, a pen is mightier than sword, and I think this example best suits Kong Patricia Mukim. Uh, Patricia, uh, welcome to Fine Tune. Uh, a long time we have met. Yes, uh, yes. How are things? Well, things are moving on as they should, and uh. <laughs> you know, uh, things change, but uh, not necessarily for the better. But they are moving on. Right. Uh, uh, Kong Pat, uh, let us move on to a subject which concerns you, the media. Okay. Uh, of late, we have seen that there has been mushrooming of media, in the sense that mushrooming of papers, mm -hmm. mushrooming of channels. Uh, what do you think about this trend? What's your take on the media in North East, the scenario right now? Well, I think uh, there's a lot more choice for the readers. You know, ultimately, we are all trying to reach the readers or the audience, the TV audience. So uh, there is a lot of competition and I think it, it pushes all of us to be better because yeah. we can't afford to be laid back. Once upon a time, Sri Lanka Times enjoyed that uh, place of privilege. Now we see that other regional papers have come in also with a lot of local news. So we have to buck up. So I think it's good, except that there must be quality. Yeah, but, uh, but what do you think about uh, national media as far as news is concerned and focusing the Northeast? I mean, we have a lot of channels, uh, yeah. a lot of newspapers. How much of coverage are they really giving to the Northeast? No, no. You see, this, I've been writing about this time and again. We have now been frozen into a Northeast region because we have papers who are publishing from Siliguri, publishing from uh, from Guwahati. So we read about ourselves. You know, we tell our own stories to ourselves. Uh, it's not reaching beyond uh, Guwahati, beyond. It doesn't even reach Calcutta, forget about the national capital. And this whole notion about national media, it's also very wrong. I think it's very wrong because you look at what's being shown evening after evening, night after night, or what's being written about. It's very metrocentric. It's very national capital region centric. Right. And uh, also, you know, people don't go beyond you know, beyond the headlines. And there, there is this large swathe of rural India that doesn't get covered. But then that also is the same complaint about us in the region. You know, if you look at most of the uh, electronic media, they are located in Delhi. They don't give that much of time and space and the interest. Factors of TRP yeah. and yeah. things like that, all it, are taken it, into yes, account. Yes, it's all, it's all very Guwahati centric. But uh, uh, I'm glad you're coming here at least to do some interview or to, do, to go to other states as well because I think we are a region, you know, we're not just one state. And I've always, absolutely. I've always failed to understand this, this um, phrase, Northeast and Assam. Why do we have to say that? <laughs> we, are, we are not east of India, no? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but Pam, uh, uh, Kongpat, what I have seen is that media as an industry is yet to come up in this region. I mean, you know, a lot of publishing houses, papers mm -hmm. are coming out, uh, you know, television channels are starting, every day we have new channels starting. Okay. But as an industry, it has really not picked up the boom. What do you have to say? No, also there is this thing about professionalism, Rajiv. If you you have a media house, you own a media house, you need to a you need to pay well to get professional people, and you need to see that it comes up to scratch. You need to be comparing yourself with the other metro medias, like the big ones that we know, the big names. But that's not happening. You know, I think uh, most owners think of the profits. And we have seen what has happened with one of the newspapers. Yeah, recently and, yeah. Uh, uh, the paper had yes. to close, and more than one thousand Yes, and I, I, I think I think that paper was essentially trying to convert uh, black money into white. I think, Absolutely. and most of the and that's a very unhealthy. No, and, and most of the news channels or the media owners are essentially doing that, but we don't really, we haven't really gone into that. Which is why I said that when this group came to the northeast, everybody was gung ho. Nobody try to dig and find out where did this money come from. How they can afford yeah. to spend so much yeah. of money. Exactly. Yeah. But ma'am, along with that also comes another thing is the ethics. How much we talk in terms of press laws, ethics, how much of ethics is really being followed in this part of the country? No, no, it's not followed anywhere. 
people are breaking ethics every day. You know, uh, we do stories, we don't go very deep, we don't give a balanced story, we quote one person, we don't quote the other one. We do it all the time and I'm guilty of that as much as everyone else. Of course, there are constraints. Some people don't want to speak to you, some people don't pick up the phone and we work on a deadline. But that's besides the point. The point is that we do need some kind of regulatory mechanism, which we don't have. Because Press Council of India is absolutely toothless. It's, a, it's an animal that doesn't work. You know, so we need to think beyond that and Justice Kaju has been talking about it again and again but I don't know how many takers there are because nobody, none of us in the media want any kind of regulation that is external but neither are we willing to do internal regulation, you know. So True, uh, but, uh, but uh, what do you think about, I mean, one of your subject has been corruption. I've, I've been an avid reader of yours for years and mm -hmm. we grew up reading your articles. Uh, Corruption is there everywhere, whether you talk in terms of Meghalaya, yeah. you talk in terms of Assam, Nagaland, yes, entire region, absolutely. and of course the entire country. Yeah. What do you, what's your take on that? Um, see, the problem with us is that there is no, what should I say, no space or not enough resources spent on investigative journalism. We don't really have investigative stories here. You look at all the newspapers on a given day, they carry the same news. We are all reflecting each other. Nobody and, and the press conferences. Absolutely, you know, they yeah. They go and cover a press Spot conference. Spot events and that. So, we, when we have when we have meetings in the newsroom, I asked recently. I said, "What is it that we are doing? Are you reading your own paper? Do you see any investigative stories?" But at the end of the day, you know what happens is they'll point to the management and say, "Well." We are only three reporters and we are so badly paid. An investigative story needs resources. You need to put in enough resources. You need to pay people well. Basically, what you need to see is that more needs to be done. People yeah. have to be more serious. Uh, absolutely. People and have to be incentivized. No, journalists have to be incentivized. Why would they go out of the way otherwise? You're also concerned about an issue. You always talk in terms of poverty. Yeah. Uh, poverty not only in the rural areas here, but poverty in the entire region. And it has really struck your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, last time also I met, yes. you were talking that we need to do something. Yes. Now, yes. What's your take on that? See, at the root of poverty is a development model that hasn't worked for us. And we are not ready to dismantle that. For instance, if we have come up, if we have constructed a scheme, and it has failed, I think the policy planners need to have enough of you know, humility to say this has failed. So we'll have to try another one. And all of the models are top down, no? so it doesn't work. You haven't gone to people, you haven't spoken to them, you don't know what they really need and then you make a framework. How will it work? It doesn't work. You look at the IFAD project though, they spent considerable number of years to study first the causes of poverty especially rural poverty. Is it agrarian? Is it, what is it? And then they developed a model for alleviating poverty. So, so something really yeah. needs to be done on that issue. On, yeah, they should learn from these Absolutely. groups. Yeah. Everyone should learn yeah. a, a, a about it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, on this note, uh, we take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we'll talk to Patricia more about the contemporary issues confronting the region. Please stay with us.